it says, let's call the exorcist. <laughs> and I am way too excited about it. Hey YouTube, it's me, Brianna. I'm the author of the young adult horror novel Blood and Water, the young adult urban fantasy novel Reflections, and the one I play Touch. Today I'm super excited to be bringing you my answers to Emma Fink's spooky scary writing tag. Most of you know that Emma is my author to bestie, she's amazing, and she is one of the people I mentioned in my previous video featuring my top four favorite author tubers. This tag, originated by Emma, features questions themed after 10 different creatures you might see around Halloween. As most of you know, Halloween is my favorite holiday, so I am super excited to get started on this one. Number one, ghost. Have you ever originally put a character slash theme slash scene in a book and later taken it out? The short answer to this one is yes. The thing is, when it comes to writing a book, I am typically an underwriter. However, there are usually one or two scenes that I end up needing to cut. The good thing about this is usually by the end of the first draft, I know which scenes aren't going to make it into the final, so I don't really have too much time to get attached. I've also had to cut a lot of characters from my drafts and just never put them back in or combine them with another character or take one character and split them into two, but I'll get to all that. Number two, Bat. Most misunderstood character in your work in progress. So I'm actually dreading answering this question because the most misunderstood character in my work in progress is also the character that I personally, as the writer, hate the most. For girls school, that character is Donovan Edward Blake Jr., also known as Eddie. He is the worst. He is a straight white boy, and he's a teenager, which is not a good combination. And his dad is the head of Reinhardt Academy, the all-boys boarding school across town. His dad is really hard on him, and he's constantly pushing him to succeed and be as good as Donovan himself thought he was when he was younger. But Eddie, of course, wants to do his own thing. Naturally, this leads to a lot of conflict between Eddie and his father, as well as Eddie and his friends slash loved ones. The reason I say Eddie is misunderstood is that although he seems like an absolute twat in the beginning, well, he has very good reason to be. Not only is he pressured a lot by his dad, but his mom is also out of the picture and he's lost a friend who is very near and dear to him long before the book started. This semi-tragic backstory is revealed later in the novel by Charlie, but I still don't like Eddie. <laughs> Number three. Jack-o-lantern. What's your most common form of inspiration to write? So this one is tricky for me because I'm basically inspired to write by my love of writing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, almost every art form inspires me to write in a different way. I tend to draw inspiration from books, of course, movies, and TV shows that are really well written, and also nature to a certain extent, and visual art. That said, nothing inspires me to write quite like seeing live theater or watching a really good movie. Number four, zombie. What is your preferred form of writerly fuel? Coffee slash tea slash wine, etc. For me, it really depends on what I'm working on as well as the time of day I'm working on it. Most of the time I am drinking coffee or tea if I've been like overly caffeinated and just need to chill a little bit. If I'm writing in the evenings, I tend to have a glass of wine or cider. Number five, vampire. Cheesiest trope that made it into your work in progress. I am a huge sucker for the friends to lovers trope and you can totally see that in girl school. There are so many characters who started out as friends and ended up as lovers. It's amazing <laughs> and I don't want to give too much away by revealing who all they are but needless to say you'll be able to tell that I love that trope. Number six, spider. Who's the character in your work in progress that looks great from afar but you would not want to interact with up close? In the same vein as Eddie, I'm gonna go with his father, Headmaster Blake, who is the worst person I have ever written. Maybe the second worst person I'll ever think about it. In girls' school, Blake is the personalization of the patriarchy and the epitome of toxic masculinity all rolled into one. He is super problematic and he thinks he is better than everyone else. Far away, Blake looks like a good deal because he's real hot and real smart and he puts himself together well. But once you get to know him, you realize what a butthole he is and how much of a jerk he is, especially to his son and the people you would think he would want to be nicest to. So yes, if you ever saw Blake in public, you would very much want to look at him, but you would not want to touch him. Number seven, Frankenstein's monster. Ever combine two characters into one or split one character into two? In girls' school, I had two separate characters. I had one newish English teacher in the same vein as Dead Poet Society and Professor Keating, 
and then I had one separate headmistress. Going into the second draft of girls' school, I realized that I could combine both of these characters into one, and thus, Headmistress King was born. I also started the novel off with a lot more boys than ended up in the latest draft. They were all really similar, and I had had about enough of, like, five straight white teenage boys, so I cut about half of them. Number eight, Skeleton. Best tips for adding in character baggage without info dumping. My biggest tip for conveying character baggage is to do so through dialogue. The big caveat to that is that if one character has baggage, you don't want them telling another character what that baggage is. Instead, you want a different character telling maybe the protagonist what the other character's baggage is, if that makes sense. Number nine, cat. What's a polarizing bookish slash writing opinion that you have? This is not an opinion that I ever thought would be controversial, but lately I've been seeing a lot of hate on the online writing community and I personally have nothing but love for the writing community. It's been a massive positive influence on my life as a writer and my personal life. I've met so many friends, fans, and followers through YouTube and Twitter, and I've even met a lot of writers that I look up to who have inspired me to do better in my work each and every day. Also made some what I hope to be lasting friendships like with Emma Fink, who is my author tube bestie and one of my favorite people of all time. On days when I'm feeling really low, it's nice to be able to reach out to people who encourage me and spur me to keep going even when I feel like giving up. Number 10. Demon, most frequent writing distraction. Normally my most frequent writing distraction is unfortunately my cat. She is really cute and really sweet and she loves me. She is also a Siamese, which means when she wants my attention, she will scream. My second most frequent writing distraction is unfortunately social media. I've mentioned this in the past, but one of my favorite ways to combat social media distractions is to put my phone on do not disturb mode. In addition, if you use Google Chrome, I recommend a little extension called focus mode, which allows you to put in your most distracting websites and then you just click the button whenever you wanna go into focus mode and it will block those websites for the duration of your session. Of course, the problem with this is that you can just disable the extension or go out of focus mode. But for me, that little kick in the pants is enough to remind me of what I should be doing when I just wanna go on Buzzfeed and figure out what type of ice cream I would be. That's all the time I have for today. Thanks again, Emma, for tagging me in this. I had such a blast recording it. Also, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe so you never miss an upload. And if you haven't checked out Emma's original video on this tag, please click the link in the description bar or the link up top and definitely do that after this one. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next week. Bye!